Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on computational numerical methods. This is Professor Arvind Prasad. Today we will learn the successive substitution method to find the root of equation. Now this is also used to find the root of polynomial equations or mixed equations where it could be polynomials and uh, other function identities like trigonometric functions or exponential functions or log functions but they should be of a single variable and uh, that makes it simpler to solve it. So how do we go about it? Now let's take a function fx is equal to x square minus x minus 6. This is a quadratic equation and let's now plot it. So as you can see the roots are x1 and x2 and uh, x2 is 3 and x1 is minus 2. So how do we solve it using successive substitution method? So let's proceed. We can rewrite the equation which was in the previous slide. That is fx is equal to x square minus x minus 6 as fx is equal to x. We can take x on the LHS that is x square on the LHS and write it as x square is equal to x plus 6 or x is equal to root of x plus 6. Therefore, what do we get now? Now we get two equations. Now fx is equal to x and fx is equal to root of x plus 6. So these are our axis and that's our fx. Now the orange line represents y is equal to x or fx is equal to x. And the green curve represents fx is equal to root of x plus 6. Now what we do first is we assume a value fx0 and we go to the curve fx is equal to x and find out x which is nothing but x1. Now at this x1 we find the value of root x plus 6 which is nothing but fx1. Now at this value of fx1, we again go back to the line fx is equal to x and find x2. Now at this x2, we go to the curve and find the value fx2. Now this fx2 we take and we again go back to the curve fx is equal to x and we finally get the value of x3 which is nothing but 3. Now if we keep doing this, okay, even if we do it beyond x3 which is equal to 3, uh, as you can see from the equation that we will keep getting back the value as 3. Let us say I take x3 as 3 and put it in the RHS of the equation, the equation that is root of x plus 6. If I put 3 there, I'm going to get root of 9, which is going to give me back 3. So now you can see that it has converged. So why it has converged? One thing to note here is that the convergence is possible in solving in substitution methods only when you rewrite the equation in such a way that is x is equal to the other part of the equation and the other part of the equation should have the slope which is less than fx is equal to x that is 1 which it should have a slope less than 1 at the root at least at the root it should it should have a slope which is less than 1 if it has a slope which is greater than 1 the method will not converge now i'll explain it let's take another example so Let's take an equation fx is equal to x square minus x minus 2. Now we can rewrite this as fx is equal to x is equal to x square minus 2. So let's draw the two curves. So here we have y is equal to x as the orange curve and the green curve is x square minus 2. Now let's take a value fx0 and go back to the line fx is equal to x and calculate x1. Now from x1 we go to the curve and find fx1. Now clearly when we take fx1 and go to the line fx is equal to x we get back x2. Now it can be seen very clearly that 
x2 is greater than x1 and this is not converging towards the root which is nothing but x3 is equal to 2. Why? Because at the root the slope of the equation x square minus 2 is greater than 1. If we differentiate it we will get 2x and if we put x is equal to 2 the slope is going to be nothing but 4 which is greater than 1. So to for successive substitution to converge okay the second equation that is the first equation of course is y is equal to x the second equation should have a slope which is less than one only then it will converge and the limit is that it should be between one and minus one again if the slope is again lesser than minus one the convergence is going to be very very slow and if it is tending to minus 1. Then also you will find that the convergence is very slow. So this is important. You have to rewrite the equation in such a fashion so that the slopes are within the ranges that I have just said. So that was all about successive substitution method. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Do like and subscribe my channel and do write comments if you have not understood anything. And if you need lectures on any other topic let me know let me know in the comments i'll be glad to make them goodbye guys have a great day